you can do different types of stuff. But number one is delivering value up front. So if I want a journalist to cover me, I'm not going to email a journalist and ask him or her to say, hey, this is what I do. This is what I've done. Here's, you know, I've got a company acquired by Google. I have this blog that has 30,000 visitors a month. I have this company, a software company, has got 4,000 people using it. This is what I've done. Look at me. Would you be able to cover me uh, on, on Forbes? You know, that's, that's just like plain promotion and it just feels unnatural. I always say the very first thing, and if you remember anything from this interview, even if you just hit stop and leave and go to the John or whatever you do when you're watching this interview, remember this one thing and then you can just stop the interview if you really got to go. If you're writing an email, would you say this email out loud to the person that you meet at a conference? So you're writing that cold email to somebody, would you come up to somebody and actually say it to their face? And if the answer is no, rewrite that email. So read it out loud to yourself, even you know, your, your voice inside or, or maybe out loud is even better. And just uh, an honest opinion, 100% honest with yourself. Would you say this to somebody? And 99% usually no. And so you would, you really got to write your emails in this, like you should be able to say that to that person. And so if you don't know that person, chances are you have all this, all this, all these tools to give them value up front. So if it's a journalist, reference their writing in their, in, in, when you're answering a Quora question, reference their writing when you're answering a Reddit question or just plain old tweet it and put something, some kind of quote that's interesting about it um, when you tweet it or comment on that writing and then email them about what you said and reference another article in the same space that has some information that they didn't have in their article. That type of a discussion is natural. That journalist or blogger who you have uh, at the conference you meet at the first, very first time, will probably talk to you and nod their head and start conversation with you about it. And my, so my approach to cold email is provide value up front and start a dialogue. Don't try and go for the close right away. Don't ask and try and get them to click and buy right away. Wait a bit a bit. Try and build a little bit of a relationship. And I know you're cringing and listening to this thinking, that's just a lot of work, Dimitri. I want sales. I want people to just close and get that sale done. I don't have time to build these relationships. And I'm saying, I know, but in the long term, you're going to get that sale, right? And you might even get a bigger sale once that person knows more about you and you guys have a little bit of a bond, right? You're talking about hopping in a bed with somebody right away on the off first date versus dating somebody and marrying them and building a family with them, right? Two different approaches. If you want to just get laid right away really quick, maybe that's your, your, your choice, you know? That, that's what you're going after. With my approach, long-term relationships, bigger sales, and who knows, that person might introduce you to other journalists or other influencers or other bloggers or somebody else that you can do business with. You never know. Uh, so approach people as you would your friends, your, your potential friends, you know, it, that's the type of cold email that I, I go after. And it all depends on what you're doing specifically like sales or partnerships or PR, but that's, that's basically the, the, the tactic.